I think maybe I've got some of these a little out of order. Go to the next slide. There we go. So we pray first and foremost, Lord, let your kingdom come. Let your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. So it's a very broad prayer. You know, it affects the USA, Australia, UK. You know, it, let your kingdom come to earth. But it's like, as we read scripture, it's, it's narrowed down. And he says, now you're involved in this, but the way you're involved in this is you're making disciples in your own nation. And the more disciples that are made, the more those disciples are going to influence government. And so as a result, Australia is going to be discipled. Amen. And then we come down to an, another step down. It all starts with us going out, sharing our faith, being witnesses with individuals going out Fridays, sharing with our workmates or whatever it is, and seeing people saved almost one-to-one. -one. And it doesn't mean we all have to be evangelists, but we need to be praying for the lost so someone else is empowered to speak to the lost, and we need to be there following up the lost, and we need to be there ministering to the needs of the lost. And as my brother said tonight, you know, maybe being a, a human mum or dad figure, to those that are just committing their lives to Christ. See, evangelism is a big thing. It is not just being people like Pastor Oscar out there on Fridays or Pastor Matt up here on Sundays. We're all involved Amen. in reaching the lost. When that happens, transformation comes. I want to tell you, um, I always like to tell you some stories about um, what, what I've been through and yeah I, I hope you don't get sick of my little uh, memories the older you get the more memories you get you see but um, when I was over at Green Slope's other side of the river we did a lot of prayer walking and so we would uh, as I said our motto was we wanted to touch heaven change earth and so we would prayer walk the whole community we'd get up in the high points we'd pray down over the suburb and then we'd come down, we'd walk through the streets and we'd ask for the Lord's blessing on people. Almost every time we would see people come to church services straight after we'd prayer walked. And I'd hear them say things like, I don't know what made me come. Um, but it happened every time. Awesome. We saw a police report that said, the crime rate in our area was lower Amen. than the rest of the, the rest of Brisbane Hallelujah. in the area where we'd prayer walked. And so that's transformation coming into the community. So we need to pray your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And when we do that, these things start to happen. Your, your level of prayer will be different. Pastor Matt's level of prayer, Pastor Chris's level of prayer, because they're entrusted to leading a church, they'll be um, perhaps praying for the community that the church represents or even for the city because they've got that level of authority that they carry in their praying. But you might be sitting maybe in a hostel somewhere. You might be sitting at home. You might be the only believer in... in your sphere of influence. That's your world. That's where you pray, let your kingdom come Amen. into my personal life. Amen. Lord, start to deal with my addiction. Start to deal with uh, my struggle. Start to deal with you know, my depression. Start to deal with me. And would you bless me? You start where your sphere of influence is. Or it might be in your relationship. So you start to pray blessing on your partner. Um, pray that the Lord will bless them. I do that every day. Pray for my wife, pray for my children, um, pray for the leaders of this church. Pray God's blessing because that's where I feel I can pray, let your kingdom come and touch the life of Pastor Matt, Pastor Chris, my wife, my daughter, my son and uh, his wife and so on. Some of you might have a broader um, sphere and can pray for communities. It's all to do with the level of authority you carry. Think about what's in your sphere of influence. 
That's what the Lord wants you to pray. Let your kingdom come into this sphere of influence. Third thing, and um, just see how we're going for prayer. Another five minutes and we'll take a break. The power of prayer. Now let me put up Andrew Murray's definition. I hope you can read that. More to the point, I hope you can get your head around it. <laughs> okay. He says, The powers of, eter of the eternal world have been placed at prayer's disposal. Now that's a, a flowery way of saying all the power of heaven is available to us through prayer. Then he goes on the second sentence. It's the very essence of true religion. And when he says true religion, he's not talking about traditional stuff. He is talking about a true relationship, the channel of all blessings, the secret of power and spiritual life. He's saying prayer is that channel that we need to keep open that allows the power to flow from the power line into our lives. It is at the same time the highest and holiest work to which man can rise. It is fellowship with the unseen and most holy one. And then he goes on and he concludes, it's on prayer that the promises of God wait for their fulfillment. Get that? Yeah. Everything scripture promises. Romans 8. Yeah. Nothing can separate us from the love of God Amen. in Jesus Christ our Lord. Prayer, connecting with the Father, makes that come alive for us. So many other promises of scripture. And he says it's on prayer that the promises of God wait for their fulfillment, the kingdom for its coming, and the glory of God for its full revelation. Now, thankfully, John Wesley um, is much briefer. And he says, God does nothing apart from prayer and everything through it. Amen. So let me give you a few things that you can fill in in your notes. First is prayer is drawing spiritual power from heaven. What does that mean? Well, prayer, again, imagine the power lines. Prayer is calling to God in time of need, connecting into the power line. God, I need you. Prayer is asking God for blessing and power that we might grow in him and have our needs met. You know, God... Um, doesn't just bless us so that we can grow fat. He doesn't just bless us so that, you know, we can be like a, a dam holding all the water back. He, he blesses us and he wants to bless us, wants to prosper us, so that we might be a conduit through which the blessing flows. Amen. 